Hey everybody, Brian here. Legend has it that sometime in between the 6th and 12th century CE, a Korean general had a problem. Well, actually he had two problems. Problem one, he was in a 6 by 4 foot bamboo cage. And problem two, he was in that cage because his army had just lost to China. Again. The issue was people. China always had more of them, so the general had to devise a way to make every Korean soldier count for five Chinese soldiers. His solution? Creating Taekyeon, forerunner of the modern martial art Taekwondo, right in that cage. In fact, if you watch modern Taekwondo Hyung or forms, many still fit into a 6 by 4 foot area. Fascinating, right? The Koreas, stuck between three historic superpowers, are truly a fascinating place, and today our objectives will be to identify Korea's location, physical features, and climate, examine its people, government, and economic systems, and to do all of that with a shaded understanding that this is a single peninsula with two divided and very different Korean countries. The Korean Peninsula lies off the east coast of the Eurasian supercontinent between China, Japan, and Russia. Now before we go on, make sure that you've printed out your PDF with the lesson guide because I've got your first question right here. Consider the story we told you about the origins of Taekwondo and the location of the Korean Peninsula. Pause here and make a prediction. What are the primary issues which have historically faced the Korean Peninsula? If you guessed something about the Korean people having to keep the Chinese, Japanese, and Russians off of their peninsula, well done. So, let's talk about this desirable peninsula. At about 86,000 square miles, the peninsula is about the size of the state of Minnesota. The Yellow Sea is to the west, the Sea of Japan to the east, and the Korean Strait to the south. Now, just to complicate things, we've already referred to the idea in our objectives that Korea is one peninsula with two Koreas, North and South. We'll discuss later how that happened, but for now, know that we'll continue our tour of the peninsula by acknowledging this split. North Korea covers about 8,000 square miles more than South Korea. European visitors described the topography as a sea in a heavy gale because it looked like choppy waves to the eye. That, as you can see, is a very good description. The highest point is Peak Tu Mountain, and while 9,003 feet isn't all that high, most of the mountains in North Korea are over 6,000 feet, making it a country of jagged peaks and deep valleys, except the flatter southwest and northeast coastal areas, which host a majority of the population. North Korea's climate is primarily humid continental, meaning it has cold, dry winters and hot, humid summers. Like North Korea, the south is mountainous, but those mountains give way to a broad coastal plain to the west and the Nakdong River Valley, which flows down to the point of the peninsula. Off that peninsula is a scattered archipelago of more than 3,000 islands as well. South Korea's climate has both humid subtropical and humid continental features, which is a bit different than that of the North. This is primarily due to the effect of the Pacific monsoon winds, which brings more rain to the South and creates four distinct seasons. In your PDF, you'll see a Venn diagram. It's those two overlapping circles, with one labeled South Korea and one labeled North Korea. As we continue the lesson, there will be opportunities for you to compare and contrast the Koreas starting right now. Pause the video here and write down some similarities and differences between location, physical features, and climate. The total population of the peninsula is around 76 million, comparable to the states of California, New York, and Virginia combined. But when we look more closely, we'll see that South Korea represents almost 50 million of that total, with a population density of about 505 people per square mile, which is the third highest population density in the world. 
On the other hand, North Korea has 47,000 square miles to South Korea's 39,000 and yet has only about 25 million people, or about 214 people per square mile. Now, both of these figures are a bit misleading, and as you look at the topographic map of the peninsula, take a few seconds and take a guess as to why. What was that? Right! Much of this peninsula, with its deep valleys and craggy peaks, is uninhabitable. For example, almost 10 million people, or one-fifth of South Korea's total population, live in Seoul, South Korea's capital city. And if you take into account the entire metropolitan area, or functional region, then Seoul is close to 25 million. The South Korean cities of Busan, Incheon, and Daegu make up another 10 million. Similarly to this, 65% of North Koreans live in an urban area, with Pyongyang, its capital city, numbering over 3.5 million. Korea as a whole is one of the most ethnically homogeneous places in the world, with almost 96% of the population of the whole peninsula claiming Korean descent. In addition, both populations have a falling birth rate, but for very different reasons. South Korea has a declining birth rate primarily due to choice of couples in South Korea, limiting the number of children that they have. In 2020, South Korea recorded a death rate higher than the birth rate for the first time. North Korea's population is also somewhat in decline, but much of that is driven by malnutrition. Additionally, a massive famine struck the country in 1995 and took an estimated 400,000 lives by its end in 1997. So wait a minute, you say, if they're ethnically the same, they live in the same cities on the same peninsula and have a similar history of being stuck in between Japan, China, and Russia, then why the split? Before we find out why they've separated, let's revisit our Venn diagram. Pause here and see if you can fill in a few more similarities and differences from what you've just learned about Korea's people. As we hinted at in our opening story, Korea was often ruled by a single power on the peninsula and often overrun by differing Chinese empires, Mongolian tribesmen, Russian imperial troops, and the Japanese empire. In 1910, Korea was annexed, or taken control of, by Japan. This lasted until the end of World War II, when the peninsula was divided on the 38th parallel, or latitude line. The North was controlled by the Soviet Union and the South under the United States. Each side formed their own government based upon the countries which controlled them, Communist Socialist to the North and Democratic Capitalist to the South. In 1950, North Korea launched an invasion of South Korea, later called the Korean War. This push ultimately failed, but firmly established the separation of the countries with a demilitarized zone on the 38th parallel, which exists to this day. This is the reality of a divided Korea, and the most stark differences can be seen in their government and economic systems. Got that Venn diagram ready? North Korea, or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, refers to itself as an independent socialist state, which holds elections and claims to have the support of the people. In practicality, North Korea is a one-party, highly centralized military dictatorship run by a single family, the Kims. They have created a cult of personality or an idealized image of their leader in order to encourage blind loyalty, starting with their first leader, Kim Il-sung. Since 1948, North Korea has been a highly militarized state, with an estimated 1.3 million people in active military service and over 6 million in reserve making North Korea the fourth largest military in the world. In spite of losing the support of the Soviet Union, one of the many reasons for the frequent famines in the country, North Korea has managed to develop nuclear weapons and routinely conducts missile tests over Japan and South Korea. While today South Korea is described by the CIA World Factbook as a fully functioning modern democracy, from 1960 to 1992 it also functioned as a military dictatorship, mostly as a reaction to heavily armed North Korea. The government now functions under the Constitution of the Republic of Korea and has an executive, legislative, and judicial branch. 
Backed by military alliances with the U.S. and others, South Korea's government has focused on economic development and universal health care, of which South Korea's is ranked second in the world, behind only Japan. As with many other Soviet-allied countries, North Korea worked towards self-sufficiency and traded only with other Soviet nations. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the North lost even that connection. While somewhat industrialized, North Korea to this day lacks sufficient manpower, materials, and technology to keep pushing its economy forward, and focuses mainly on military equipment and food production. As noted with their people, famines are frequent and only through international food aid programs stretching from the 1990s through the mid-2000s has North Korea's malnutrition and starvation been brought under control. By contrast, the South is a huge hub for technology. Well-known companies such as Samsung, Hyundai, and LG helped to make South Korea one of the Asian tigers or fast-growing East Asian economies. South Korea ranks as the 10th largest economy in the world and is the 5th largest exporter in the world. This has driven not only the healthcare system mentioned before, but a modern transportation grid based on mass transit and a huge educational push, resulting in a highly educated workforce. Before we finish up, pause here for the last time and add the final touches to your Venn diagram, including the overlap area where you can add anything that both countries have in common. The Korean Peninsula is a tale of two countries, both with a challenging past and a desire to chart their independent path away from the larger countries around them. But they've gone about it in two very different ways, the North with isolationism and military dominance, the South through democracy and economic technological influence. As always, let's keep exploring. Hey, hey.